In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the distance from a point to a plane. Now, before we actually solve the problem, let's talk about how we can derive the formula. So let's say we have some plane represented by this picture and a point above that plane. Let's call that point P1. So our goal is to find the distance between that point and the plane. We want the shortest distance. We're going to call that distance D. Now let's say we have some other point that is on the plane, which we'll call P0. And we're going to draw a vector emanating from P0 pointing towards P1. And let's call that vector B. Now let's turn this into a right triangle. Theta is going to be the angle between B and D. So with this information, how can we find D? Well, first, let's begin by defining vector B. B is basically P0 to P1. So it's the difference between those two points. P1 has the coordinates x1, y1, z1. P0 has the coordinates x0, y0, z0. So vector B is going to be x1 minus x0 comma y1 minus y0 comma z1 minus z0. Now in order to define a plane, we need a point on a plane and a vector that's perpendicular to the plane or the normal vector, which we'll call n. Now in order to find the value of d, we need to get the scalar projection of b onto n. So I'm going to highlight that in green. So the scalar projection of b onto n will be this high. So it's basically a component of vector b that's parallel to n. And notice that that component has the same height as d. So we could say that d is the absolute value of the scalar projection of vector b on vector n. And basically, this is b cosine theta, if we do some trig. So let's say this is b. If this is theta, this is theta here, based on alternate interior angles, if you remember that in geometry. Now, cosine theta is going to be equal to the adjacent side, which let's call that x, divided by the hypotenuse, which is b. So we can see that x is going to be b cosine theta. But we need to use the magnitude of b. So this part here is equal to what we see here, which is the length of the component of b that is parallel to n. So that's the scalar projection of b onto n. So this is how you can find it. But we don't have an angle, so that's not going to work out for us. So let's talk about what we can do. Now, let's say we have two vectors, vector A and vector B, and we know the angle between them. The dot product of A and B is equal to the product of the magnitudes of A and B times cosine theta. So notice that we have this portion of the equation. To isolate that part, we need to divide both sides by the absolute value of A. So we could say that B cosine theta is the dot product of A and B divided by the magnitude of A. Well, in this example, B could be thought of as capital B, and A could be thought of as the normal vector N. So now we're going to have the dot product between N and B. But because we're dealing with distance, we want the absolute value of that dot product. We don't want any negative answers because the distance between a point and a plane should be positive. So this is going to be the dot product of A and B or N and B divided by the magnitude of N. So this is the formula that we're going to use to help us get the answer to the question or to the problem rather. So let's begin with the dot product of n and b. So we have vector b, 
and vector n is simply a, b, c. So a is 6, b is negative 3, c is 2. So d is going to be the absolute value of the dot product of n and b. So this is going to be a times x1 minus x0. And then it's going to be b times y1 minus y0. And then plus c times z1 minus z0. Divided by the magnitude of vector n, which is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Now let's do some algebra. So let's distribute a to x1, b to y1, c to z1. So I'm going to get ax1 plus by1 plus cz1. I'm going to group these together. Next, I'm going to multiply a by negative x0, b by negative y0, and c by negative z0. All of these terms will be negative, so I'm going to take out a negative sign, and it's going to be a x0 plus by0 plus c z0 divided by the same stuff. So let me get rid of this because I am running out of space. Now let's talk about the equation of a plane. The equation of a plane is in this form. It's ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal to zero. But d is on the other side. So to move positive d from the left side to the right side of the equation, this becomes equal to negative d. So I can replace what I have here with negative d because they are equal to each other. Technically, this should be ax0, by0, cz0. So now I have that d is going to be ax1 plus by1 plus cz1. Now replacing all of this with negative d, I have negative times negative d, so it becomes positive d. And then all of that will be divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So this is the formula that we need in order to calculate the distance from a point to a plane. So now let's work on finishing the problem. So point P1 is what we see here, 3, 7, negative 4. X1 is 3, Y1 is 7, Z1 is negative 4. And A is 6, B is negative 3, C is 2. D, we'll be careful with this one because I should have kept this, but remember the formula. D is on the left side of the equation, not on the right side. So D is not 10, but D is negative 10. That's one trap you don't want to fall for. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. So A is 6 times X1, which is 3. B is negative 3 y1 is 7, c is 2, z1 is negative 4, and d is negative 10. So all divided by the square root of a squared, so that's 6 squared plus b squared, that's negative 3 squared plus c squared, which is 2, so 2 squared. 6 times 3 is 18, negative 3 times 7 is negative 21, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, and then we have minus 10. 6 squared is 36, 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4. 18 minus 21, that's negative 3, minus 8, that's negative 11, minus 10, 
that gives us negative 21. 36 and 4 is 40 plus 9, that's 49. The absolute value of negative 21 is positive 21, and the square root of 49 is 7. So the answer is 3. And that's basically it for this video. So now you know how to find the distance between a point and the plane. You also know how to derive the formula if you really need to know that information. You could just memorize the formula. But all you have to do is once you have the information, just plug it into the formula, you can get the answer. But that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel.